Crafty Hope. Welcome. It's time for me to work on my mixed media prompt project for hashtag Crafty Hope prompts. Basically every Monday I draw three prompts from a list I had of 156. It is whittled down because I am on week 43 of this challenge. And when I draw those three prompts on Monday, I take a regular old playing card and I alter it and turn it into, oh, <laughs> and turn it into a prompt card using those three prompts that I drew. Now, once I get that prompt card made using those prompts on either side, I then like to do a larger project on Saturday that incorporates those same three prompts so that I'm doing more than just making a card every week with them so that, you know, I get some like real life experience with them or something. So this is that post or that video where on where I'm going to use those three. Um, you're welcome to play along with my Crafty Hope prompts. You can use those same prompts that I am drawing or you can I've got that full list of prompts below if you're running late and or if you just want a bunch of prompts or however you want to do it I just ask that if you play along or use my prompts that you use the hashtag crafty hope prompts and tag me so that I can see what you make that's all and if you're if you're not posting anywhere that's fine too it's you know this is just about getting inspired so this is the card I made for week 43 using the prompts music with acrido, nickel, azo, gold, and lines. I think for this week, for my project, I am going to work in this journal. This is a journal I made. It's the Rusted Roots class from um, Michelle of Mickleney. It's on the Southern Gals Designs Creative Academy or Southern Gals Creative, whatever it is. I'll try to put a link to that class below. And I just mentioned in my clean slate journal video that I tend to work through junk journals kind of chrono just front to back. Um, this one though I have skipped around because there are pages in here I'm not sure what to do with. So I've done those three. I've left a couple blank. There's one back here somewhere that I've done. Um, there's another one in here somewhere too I thought I had done. But anyway. I skip around in this one simply because I like the pages so much that I'm like I don't know what to do with them but you can see I've done the first two pages here and I've got this one and then I've done this one so this page is made up of it's a brown paper bag and I love that it has this like pocket and then this is a piece of fabric up here and I've kind of uh, not known what to do with it because I really love this on here. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try to work on this page today. For my prompts, let's say music, I still have some of the music paper I pulled out when I made the card the other day along with another piece of sheet music. So I'll be incorporating those and then quinacrino nickel azo gold. I do have my high flow acrylic from golden of that and then for lines I'll figure that out just like I did on here lines aren't that big of a deal I've put them all over here so I'll figure out how to do it on here as well but I also pulled out because I want to do something with this pocket and I think that's my idea is to leave as much of this ring of, of rust here as I can and instead really focus on maybe altering it a little but then adding something in this pocket of sorts. So in looking for some more music paper I found these pieces of cardstock that I altered. I, I embossed them and then sprayed different sprays on them and they're all different. The back sides have not been altered. They are what they were. And I think they fit just nicely in here. It's kind of perfect. So I'm possibly going to make like one side, I don't know, alter the other side and do something here. I don't know what, I really am drawn to this one. 
but I kind of want to start here and see what I can do with some of my prompts and then worry about what I'm going to tuck in this pocket. So let's get to it. It's time for my prompt project. If you do have any questions about this challenge, how you can participate or any suggestions about how you would have used these materials or the pocket, let me know. I'd love to hear what those are. I think I'm going to zoom out just a little, Ooh, maybe not that much, and we're going to get to it. This page is really a minimalist approach to both these prompts and altering a, a junk journal because I really enjoy these pages. It, I have to remind myself sometimes I don't have to cover up every little bit of a junk journal page or an art journal page. Sometimes you just need to, to do a little art. Now this did take me a while because there was a lot of thinking and drying times and all of that and I do skip around a bit. So I'm going to start by go ahead and adding the first prompt on here, which is music. So I've got that sheet music and I really just wanted to bridge the gap between that fabric that was at the top and the that paper bag. So I stuck down my music paper. I'm going to come back um, after I grabbed a few things that I thought I wanted to incorporate in here. And I'm going to go ahead and stick in my second prop, which is Quidacridone Nickel Azo Gold. Again, I've got this golden high flow acrylic. And I put just a little dab on that music paper and I'm going to spread it, that Quidacridone out. Again, trying to merge that all of those kind of things together get the that on there and now I'm doing my lines y'all I went just straight through the prompts here and I'm doing just some sketchy lines in a um Cibolo all pencil in black yeah and then activating it the lines themselves you'll see in the end kind of because I didn't smear this a whole lot but all three of my prompts down just like that I will bring them all back in in little touches here but for the most part that's that's how my prompts are getting on this page so I am going to add a little bit of splatter in gold with some Liquitex gold acrylic ink I use a fan brush to do that I really like how uh, how fan brushes splatter. So once it's dry, I'm going to start bringing in some of the elements I had picked out. The first is this Tim Holtz photo booth picture. I like this lady here. I really, I picked her out because she, well, I picked out a photo booth first off because I knew it would fit nicely within that circle. And like I said, I really like that rusty circle that's on the paper bag and I wanted to accent it above all else. So I found her and I knew she'd fit within there. And something at first, really, I thought I was going to put a botanical in there. And in searching through my botanicals, I found this, what do you call that? Like some kind of partial wreath or something. And was like, oh, that would be perfect at the base of this ring because that ring isn't complete. So I've got it. And I am inking it up with, what is that? Walnut Stain Distress Ink. And I kind of just want to put my flowers at the base of it and then that girl in the center. And so I'm going to ink her as well. You can see I'm using this little, it's like a, what do you call it? I Like an eyeshadow applicator type thing, I suppose. And it, it gets in some of the nooks and crannies. So that's why I was using it instead of my big ink spreader thing. I can't I remember what the name of that is. The ink applicator thing. <laughs> And I'm going to mark where I want her to sit so that the the laurel wreath or whatever you want to call that sits on top of her nicely. And I'll use Fabri-Tac to stick her down. So I put my Fabri-Tac on her, stick her down, and then I've got a bit of a weight I'm going to put over her. And y'all, when I put the weight over, do you see how she's poking through that? I love that you can see her face <laughs> through that hole in there. All right, so while she's drying, I will put Fabri-Tac also on the wreath. Both of these Tim Holtz products are a thicker paper, so I like using the Fabri-Tac as my adhesive because it really does a great job of sticking. And I'll have a heavier weight there, and her face is still kind of poking through the inside. Once that is dry, I'm going to, um, what am I going to do? 
Um, ch check everything. I think I kind of want to start working on what I'm going to slip on the inside. So I really liked the colors of this one. You know, I had that honeycomb one that I really liked. And y'all see when I slip it in there, it matches really beautifully. And I thought, oh, I'm going to use that. But I thought, you know what? That's already got a quidacridone color to it. I can't add any any of the quidacridone nickel azo gold to it. But this one... I can't. Oh, and I found that part of that wasn't glued, so I'm going to go ahead and stick more Fabri-Tac on it. <laughs> so I am going to go with the other bluer piece, even though it doesn't quite match, because I, like I said, I know I could add that quidacridone to it. And what I wanted to do was try to make sure that both of these pieces had all three prompts on it. So I'm using just a little bit of that watery cretacridone to make this piece feel a little more aged. And I'm making sure I go around the edges, kind of like I'm inking the edges and putting a little bit of the cretacridone in the center and just giving this a yummy old and aged feel, kind of like the picture that photo booth picture has on it. And of course, I'll add a little bit of splatter on there because that's what I do. <laughs> All right, once that is spread all over there, I'm going to go ahead and dry this. And then I will come in with a distress oxide. I think that's what I'm going to do. Or am I going to do the back? No, I decided to go ahead and bring it because I brought my quidacridone in. I got to bring music paper in. So I decided to go ahead and cover the back of this to cover up some of that um, overspray and stuff that's back there. And just put it down on that music paper using my Uhu glue stick just like that and then I will trim this down real quick and so that's just really just acting as a backer to this it, you'll not see it on the front and then later on when I do the other side of the page I'm working on I already have like a base on here so I know it's the base for <laughs> anyway but I already have music on the front page so it doesn't really matter if you can't see the music paper on the back it's y'all I'm rationalizing all of this to like some umph degree it's crazy so there's my distress oxide in black soot and I'm going to lightly rub it over that embossed paper so it can pick up that texture I thought some of that texture was kind of important I I really like it so I've put it on there and I like how distress oxides kind of activate when you wet them so I did spray a bit of water on there and I will dry it and once it is dry, I'm going to start focusing on kind of bringing these elements together. So since I had gold splatter on the front of my page, I'm going to go ahead and add some gold splatter on this embossed page. And then, of course, dry it again. Lots of lots of layers of drying. So it is done. I'm going to look at these two pages together. And I like this. I don't know if you can tell how much more like aged and yummy it feels. Uh, the blue that's on there, there's some blue in that like flower wreath thing. So I thought, okay, that goes really nicely. And I'm looking at this, looking at the two sides, trying to decide how else I want to add. I want to add, I need to add lines somehow onto that card and um and some kind of other sentiments and elements so I stepped off camera found another photo booth picture I wanted to use along with some lines some words from a book and these lines were some of them were together some of them were apart it's all from the same book but one was like way at the beginning of the book and one was at the way at the end so I'm kind of gonna join them together to make my own once I cut down this gentleman's photo booth, I did ink him up with more of that Walnut Stain Distress ink. And I've got the words I want to put on his page there. So I'm kind of moving him around and wondering if I'm going to keep them all connected and leave him like that. And I just didn't like it. It felt, it felt too structured and I didn't want that. So I will go ahead and cut these these words down, break them apart in a way that made sense to me in the like rhythm of it I suppose so I'm cutting those down and I've got a sentiment as well for her that I will bring in in just a second but first I want to get all of his nice and cut down and laid out make sure I don't lose him I think I lo lose a piece of it in a yeah a part of it got lost somewhere I had to go get it off the floor <laughs> and everything um 
So I'm laying that out. I'm kind of liking that. So I'm going to put him aside for just a second while I focus on the words I have for her. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, y'all, I'm looking this way too long. So for her, I have the words, she smiled at him. And I'll ink up the edges of that as well, just so it'll stand out. And I really thought I was going to put the words up there, but I realized they easily got lost up in all of that quadacridone and the music paper. So I'm going to put it right on that paper bag and just, again, glue it down with my Who glue stick. So now I'm going to turn to my little card and I'm going to ink up all of the edges of this as well. I'm going to speed this up really fast because I'm doing the same thing. I'm inking the edges of all of these little strips and then gluing them onto my card. So I will pull this across. And I have to say that, you know, this is an exercise in kind of minimalism. And, you know, I brought these these prompts into this and the prompts don't have to be the central focal point of your projects. If you are working in this challenge, it, they just have to be a springboard into ideas. And that's what I have to remember that it doesn't always have to be the most important part of a, a junk journal page or even the cards that I'm making. They just have to be on there. So keep that in mind that if, if you're struggling with some of these prompts, you don't have to take them at face value. You don't have to use the exact things that I've used or the way they're intended. What do they make you think of? How do they inspire you? That's what these prompts are there for. So once I have all of that glued down, I did use the Fabri-Tac again to glue down my dude. Um, and I said to him, let him to set and dry for just a second with my weight and I've got a bit of thread on a needle. And this is how I'm going to bring lines into this side, y'all. I've been doing a lot of stitching for iCAD. If you haven't seen that, I'm going to link that in the upper right. I've got a whole vlog series I'm doing for index card a day. And this kind of reminded me of my index cards. And I decided one of the stitches I've really enjoyed is called a pistol or pistil stitch, P-I-S-T-I-L. And it's basically an elongated French stitch or French knot. So that's what I decided to do here for my lines is make a really long line that ends in a French knot. Now my first attempt at it here did not work out so great. The knot, I don't think I wrapped it around my needle the right way. So I'm going to do that again. I pulled my, my thread out and I'm going to re-thread my needle and then go back and wrap the needle the way I know how to and then go back in that same hole I had punched and then end yeah in that line with a French knot and I'm going to do this again now I could have cut the thread and started over but I've got plenty of thread cut there so I'm just going back in the original one and then pulling this back out and making another French knot all the way down at the end pulling down so I'm going to make three lines that end in these French knots nothing too fancy because this is like the masculine portion of this card so I've kind of got like the feminine portion and the masculine portion. And I don't know if you can see what I read his side because her side says she smiled at him and his side says, and as he looked at her, he realized as he always did how strong she was. And I really love that. Um, like I said, this came from different parts of the same book. I think it was actually a Danielle, Danielle Steele novel. So that kind of makes sense. But anyway, um, now I'm tying this off on the back here as best I can, but I will tape it. I'm just going to use a little bit of transparent tape to stick it down. And when I go to work on the back of this card, I can deal with all of that later. So I'm just trying to get it done. I could have used masking tape, but that would have hidden all some of my music paper there. And I didn't want to do that quite yet until I knew. Yeah, so... All right, I'm going to look at these. Oh, I'm going to ink the edges of the card with that same Distress Ink in Walnut Stain to bring that back in again. And then I think I'm going to start looking at these two things. And there's something, they feel very disjointed, not like they belong together. And I decided it was the blue. And I'm going to, I think I tap my fingers here for a second. But I decide it's the blue that's too 
too stark like it stands out too much and I need to bring that blue somehow into my front page so what I do is I, I was trying to remember what it was I sprayed on that card originally and I decided that it was some stress oxide spray in I think it's mermaid lagoon and so I'm going to cover up my sentiment because I definitely don't want that to get splatter on it and of course it's the first place it's splattered and really where I want to put that splatter is along that music paper up there so I get it splattered up there I'm going to wet this real quick just to let it move a little bit like I said I like those distress oxides and how they they distort and then I will dry this and once it's dry I have decided this little page with a pocket is done Here's a look at both of them. I'll have lots of pictures. If you have any questions about the project, about this process, about any of it, please don't hesitate to ask. And if you like this, make sure to give me a thumbs up. And um, if you like what I, the content I'm bringing to you, um, do subscribe. I've got more coming. And I will see y'all with all of that later. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I will see y'all later. Bye. <laughs>